A question I get asked a lot online is, how do I make a career out of adventure? So I thought I'd sit down and share a few thoughts, but, but as I started wondering about what Sarah realised, it's actually quite a lot to talk about, which is why I've had to resort to a very official looking clipboard with some notes and uh, even a pencil behind my ear and a, an Avengers pencil. So this is the thoughts I want to share about trying to make a career out of adventure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by asking you some questions to see whether you actually want to try and make a living out of adventure or whether you really just want to go and have adventures and they are very different things. And uh, and if you're still hanging around after that and you decide to turn your hobby, the thing you love, into your job, which you hopefully love but is still a job, then I'm going to chuck out at the end some simple, some simple but not easy bits of advice that I hope might help you, you get started. Right, first question. You say you want to be an adventurer. Why don't you just get a proper job? You can almost certainly earn more in a proper job than you can being a so-called adventurer and then just spend your spare time and your money going and having actual real adventures. The only reason not to do that is if you will also enjoy all the, the spin-off work stuff that comes from a career in adventure. I spend a huge amount of time sitting at a desk, looking, actually I stand at a desk, very good for your back, standing at a desk or making videos, basically being in the shed, making stuff happen compared to the amount of time that I'm actually out on adventures. So what adventures, travel, expeditions do you want to do? Why are they exciting to you? And importantly, why should anyone else care about what you're going to try to do? How do you fancy earning your money from adventure? Perhaps it could be guiding clients on expeditions. You need to be qualified for that. Um, you might manage other people's expeditions and projects. Or would it be writing, speaking, photography, making films, um, working in product development, working for, working for an outdoor company or brand, uh, trying to be a brand ambassador for, for outdoor stuff or getting famous on the telly. What is it that you want to do to do your career in adventure? Um, are you good looking and willing to flaunt that? Are you rich? No? <laughs> Welcome to my world. In that case, you're going to have to make it in adventure through doing good stuff, doing it well and working very, very hard. There's not going to be a fast track, immediate rise to being on the telly or Instagram fame or whatever it is you might be craving. <sighs> nope. You are going to have to learn that life is going to be cheap. You're going to have to learn to, to live on not very much, to work very hard and uh, uh, work part time, have a proper job or just move to some part of the world that's insanely cheap and try and make things happen from there. Are you okay with that? And are you prepared to do all the hard stuff about being self-employed, working seven days a week, owning a clipboard? and a pencil, worrying about where your, your next cash is going to come from, filling in tax forms. <sighs> I'm not sure I am really. Anyway, are you still here after those questions? Okay, good. Right, secret. I've managed to make my living out of traveling by shh, doing interesting things and then telling the stories about them in a way that is interesting and appealing to other people, hopefully. And then, even that's not enough, you then have to do the third thing, which is working hard at marketing yourself, telling the world who you are, what you're doing, showing off about yourself on the internet. It's a weird thing that I've, I'm not that comfortable with, but it is pretty essential. And finally, I've made a real point of trying to do a very good job whenever somebody asks me to do something that they're going to pay me for. It takes a long time to build a reputation and not long to blow one. But from a, from a positive reputation, slowly things can start to develop and you can start to, to make this work. But 
None of this. It never occurred to me to try and make a living out of adventure, to, as in to actually earn my money from adventure until I had um, gone to live for a year in rural Africa, uh, been on three bike trips of three months each, spent three months um, volunteering and traveling around Asia, uh, writing for my uh, university travel magazine, uh, writing two books, uh, only one of which has ever been published, um, doing 300 talks unpaid to get good at speaking, and, uh, and spending four years cycling around the world. Only after those things did it cross my mind to start to begin to set off down the long journey towards the road, towards maybe one day trying to earn my living from so-called adventure, which ironically these days doesn't really involve me being on adventures, it involves me sitting in my little shed talking at my camera there. <laughs> so, uh, in other words, like pretty much any other career, I'd served my apprenticeship. I'd built up experience, I'd built up a bit of a reputation, I'd built up some contacts, and only then was I able to start earning any cash at all, really. For many, so how do I get my money? For many years, I got nearly all of my money from giving talks about my adventures. Um, as I said, I gave 300 free talks first while I was cycling around the world, raising money for a charity and occasionally getting myself a bed for the night. Um, and then when I wanted to start earning money, I began that by giving talks in local schools. Uh, free for a few, and then once I got a couple of references and a couple of recommendations to other schools, charging a little. Knowing how much to charge is impossible. Think of a number, 50 quid, go do a talk. If they like it, go to your next talk, charge 75 quid. Increase it little by little by little until you gradually meet resistance. That's how you learn what you're worth to the market, what your story is worth. So do a load of school talks, get references from the school saying, oh, what a wonderful talk. And secondly, importantly, ask that school to pass you on to their pals in another school. Cold calling is a nightmare. Uh, working through People who know someone who knows someone who knows someone, this seems to be how the world gets going. <coughs> Excuse me, clipboard. <coughs> the next step from school's talks, it took me many years to get my foot in the door of, of corporate speaking, giving, giving talks to businesses. I got quite early on, because I cycled around the world for four years and that's quite cool, quite early on I got on the books of loads of speaking agencies but the phone never rang. I really only started to get corporate talks through trying to build up a reputation for, for what I do myself. And I did that by concentrating on blogging. This is back in the olden days of about 2010, 2009, the ancient olden days of blogs. And what I did was I just worked hard to make good regular content, put it out there into the world, gradually grow an audience of people who knew about me and eventually some businesses would start to come to me and say, hey, please will you come talk to our people about your experiences. Um, so I found cold calling businesses hopeless. Um, speaking though has been what has made this life viable. I also write books. I've written, ooh, I've published nine books. Uh, my first book that I wrote never saw the light of day because <laughs> it was rubbish. And I've got two more books about to be published and I've just started another book. So I write a lot of books, but even with those, there's absolutely no way I could come close to living from that. You make very little money from writing. I used to write maybe a dozen articles a year for magazines that would pay a few hundred pounds at a time. Um, they are hard to get and increasingly hard to get paid for doing them. Um, but in the last few years, what I've started to do more of is to start working for brands, either as an ambassador. So I work for a brand I, and I do stuff with them in their gear, using their stuff, going to their events, promoting them online as a, as a year long relationship. And that is my holy gate. That is my holy grail dream thing of terms in terms of trying to make a career out of adventure. 
to find a few brands who I care about and to be long-term partners with them. So I'm starting down that road now. I also now do more one-off brands campaigns whereby a brand gets in touch and they say, hey, we like what you do, here's what we do, is there a way we can meet in the middle, share the stories and promote the product and promote me and I get some cash. My work with brands has come out come about entirely because over the years I've started to get better at, at filming stuff. So now either brands have seen my films, like them and want to do stuff similar, or they've seen my films and they say, we like that, please go do the same thing, but using our toothbrush along the way, um, or our pencil, I need a pencil sponsor. So it's come because I've got moderately good at making films. However, this is a really important point. I started making films back in the olden days of 2009, purely because a new camera was invented, the Canon, Fiat, the Canon 5D Mark II. It's about the first small little digital SLR that made beautiful HD film footage. And when I saw that, I thought, wow, that is the beautiful, that is the future, that is exciting. Imagine if I could somehow use this with adventure stuff, that would be amazing. I'd never filmed anything in my life, it never occurred to me to even want to film anything in my life, but I went out and bought that camera. It was £1,600. The fact I can remember the price exactly shows how alarming that number was to me. It was the most expensive thing I'd ever bought in my life and I didn't have the slightest clue how to use it or what I was going to do with it or how on earth it would ever pay itself back. And I did it because I loved it and I learned to make films because I loved it. And Nine years later, occasionally now, people pay me to make films. I hope within that there's a lesson for you with whatever you're trying to do. Find something you really, really love, do it because you really, really love it, work out how to pay for life in the meantime, and somehow, hopefully along the way, good stuff will come. And that all comes from you doing what you love, doing it really, really, really well, and doing it relentlessly and remorselessly for many, many years. <sighs> It's really hot in my shed. Um, when I become a famous adventurer, I'd like an air-conditioned shed. <laughs> Two things separate those people who make long careers from adventure versus those who eventually fall by the wayside. Money and patience. Three questions for you. How much money do you need to earn? How much money would you like to earn? how much money can you barely get by on? Fingers crossed, your answer to all those questions is the same amount of money. In which case, you're ready to begin the long and patient journey towards turning what you love into, hopefully, a life whereby you can sit around in your shed, pratting around and call this work. Do what I love and calling it work. So, here is a list of su suggestions that I hope will be helpful for you to set you off down your career of adventure. Number one, go on a massive, interesting adventure. Without this, we are wasting our time. It worries me how many people email me saying, I really wanna make a career in adventure, when what I'd like people to be saying is, I really wanna go on a massive adventure. You've gotta get the priority on that the right way around, otherwise, you're gonna, well, that's not true. You can just focus on the career if you're quite happy to be uh, beautiful and rich and flaunt yourself on Instagram with selfies and little life affirmations saying how beautiful life is if you follow your dreams. But if you're ugly like me, then you're just gonna have to go on a massive adventure first. Um, get out there and do something cool. Number two, work out how to tell that story well. There's so many ways to tell a story. You can look at those who tell good stories already. Even better, think of a new way yourself to tell that story. Um, but we're all so bombarded with average, mediocre online information and content. Um, <laughs> look at yourself. You are now, whatever we are, seven minutes down this rabbit hole of watching me rabbiting on. Proof in point. Turn off this nonsense, go do something. Um, so how are you going to do something that makes you stand out? Number three, B 
become an authority in your niche. Whatever little niche of adventure and storytelling you choose to do, try and become one of the best at that and become an authority on it. Become someone who can help other people within that. Engage in conversations with other people doing the same sort of stuff that you are. Do your very best to help other people within the world that you're in. That might seem counterintuitive that you have to be competitive and trample on people in order to to get to the top of it but that's just nonsense and even if it wasn't nonsense it's a daft way to live your life but adventure is not a zero-sum game I've really found that the more I help other people with their projects and their plans the more eventually the universe comes back to help me which sounds like hippie nonsense claptrap but it seems to work Number four, this is not hippie nonsense claptrap. Start building an email list today. Number five, think about who you admire in the adventure world. So what is it that inspires you? Um, are they amazing at the expeditions, the exploits that they do? Alex Honnold. Do they take beautiful photographs of expeditions? Martin Hartley. Do they tell their story magnificently well, Ben Saunders. Um, do they make fabulous adventure films, Renan Ozturk? Um, do they write the way that you'd like to write if your brain was twice the size of a normal human, uh, Rob McFarlane? <laughs> um, do they observe the, the online adventure world, the real adventure world, do they observe it well and comment on it well and, and uh, engage with the audience incredibly well, like um, Brendan Leonard? Why do you like what they do? What are they good at? What can you learn from them? And are you willing to work hard to get good like they're good? And, and then, why should anyone pay you money to do that stuff rather than them? You need to work out how to answer that question. Number six, don't believe the lives you see on the internet. So even excluding the ludicrously over boastful oh gosh, sunset and airy life advice and just boastful nonsense that the uh, internet adventure world seems to have been filled with. Nobody's living the adventurous life that that is appealing to you. No one's doing that life without either being minted, being incredibly beautiful, or working like crazy behind the scenes to make this stuff happen. So behind this cat so here's the camera pointing at me heroic handsome adventurer books about adventure globe adventure this side of the camera there's a box of receipts and a printer and a massive pile of boring paperwork and uh, some new light bulbs and a dirty teacup this is the the behind the scenes life of that don't forget about that the to-do lists and just all the real stuff of a normal grinding day-to-day -day job which is what you're after you want to turn adventure into a job do you ah <sighs> number seven are you going to get quite good at lots of things or are you going to get really good at one thing both options can work otherwise you need to begin partnering with people who are good at the stuff that you're not good at which of those things suits your personality type i'm absolutely terrible at partnering with other people and i really wish i wasn't i'd love to do that more but i try and do everything myself which is stupid number eight don't do anything you're embarrassed about or feel that you should keep secret um buying social media followers, uh, cheating on an adventure, um, bigging yourself up to be more than you're not. You're in this for the long run, right? Imagine that this is a hundred year project you're trying to build, not trying to be take over the world by Christmas. Number nine, don't think about a career in adventure as a way to make money. I could make a lot more money in my life doing other things so could you. Think of it as how can I get to spend more time doing the things that I love and if that works out and if you can earn enough money to pay the bills then boy oh boy you have suddenly become the richest boy in the playground. 10. 
Nobody owes you a living. Don't go moaning and complaining and bickering and being jealous of other people and all the things that I've spent too much time doing. The, 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 it's gonna take a long, oh no, what's that beeping? Don't be, I tell you what that is. That is my beeper alarm to tell me to get off the computer and to go do some pull-ups, which I try and do every hour to turn off the computer. Nobody owns you, nobody owes you a living. It's going to take a lot of time until you get paid for stuff. So figure out how are you gonna pay for life until then. Please don't do the Instagram thing of follow your dream, quit your job tomorrow, because you'll be really hungry by Friday. Figure out how you're gonna pay for your life and gradually decrease that as your adventure earnings increase. Don't just go cold turkey, because that's daft. 11. Hire an accountant with your first paycheck. I wish I'd done that. I really wish I'd done that. Number 12, don't forget to go on a massive adventure. Without that, all of this is pointless nonsense. Remember, you're trying to choose a life here. What is the point of that life? Remember that at all times. Keep the, the stuff that matters the most, keep that at the forefront of what you're trying to do. For two reasons, one, when I remember the stuff that I love, adventure, creating stuff, then I become much happier. When I remember the stuff that I love, adventure, creating stuff, and keep that at the forefront, that's when I make better stuff, and that's when cash comes along and throws itself upon me. When I deliberately try to strategically chase money or fame or glory or or ego, then I get miserable and I make stuff I'm embarrassed about, rule number eight, and it's just rubbish. So remember what the point of the life that you are choosing is. <sighs> Finally, <laughs> Do not make long videos like this just before lunch because then you'll end the video absolutely starving and you won't care about saying anything else. You just want to turn it off and go have lunch. Go do an adventure.